We're getting a ton of leaks and rumors regarding the 5060 Ti, indicating it is probably coming very soon, including rumored release date of the 16th and uh, an announcement date of the 15th. This is all still rumored. The pricing is also rumored to be 379 for the eight gigabyte model, because yes, it is still rumored to have an eight gigabyte model, and 429 for the 16 gigabyte model. We also have performance leaks uh, indicating 15%-ish uh, uh, more performance. Now, we've got a lot of other news topics to talk about today as well, but again, I do want to start out with this because this seems to be the, uh, uh, the lead for GPU news. Now, first of all, let's talk about the performance increase over the 4060 Ti. This is a leaked performance result on Geekbench, it's OpenCL and Vulkan, and I will say that these have not necessarily been the most accurate uh, predictors because we have been getting these Geekbench leaks every uh, for every 50 series card and um, again especially with the OpenCL results but um, uh, even the Vulcan results this has not necessarily uh, been indicative of the overall performance remember these are not gaming benchmarks Anyway, with that being said, let's think about how that ties in with the pricing, how that stacks up with the previous generation, and uh, what do we think about these pricing rumors? Because again, this is still just to be rumored. Well, think about this in context of what they've been doing with the overall 50 series, uh, performance and pricing wise. And I think this does seem to be consistent with Nvidia's strategy, although these are still, again, just rumors. So always take that with a grain of salt. So the 4060 Ti came in with an MSRP of 399 for the eight gigabyte model. This is a $20 reduction to the MSRP, which is consistent with what they've done with other cards. Like for example, the 5070 coming in at a $550 MSRP, whereas the 4070 came in at a $600 MSRP. Or same thing with the 5070 Ti coming in at a $750 MSRP, whereas the 4070 Ti came in at an $800 MSRP. So this has been a consistent thing throughout the lineup of actually having the 50 series at a slightly lower MSRP than the 40 series cards. That hasn't been the case on every model, but it has been the case on some of the previous models. However, we have also seen the overall performance uplifts for the 50 series versus their 40 series uh, predecessors not being super, uh, <laughs> super crazy uplifts. Again, while this leak being a Geekbench leak might not be indicative of the exact actual results and this showing, you know, maybe in the 10 to 15% performance boost range, that is what we've seen uh, from a lot of the other cards with the 5080 coming in, you know, maybe 15% uh, faster than the 4080. Uh, and again, the, the uh, uh, 5070 being, I think it was like about 15% faster than the 4070 and about tied with the 4070 Super. Again, so it seems like this is very consistent with the value proposition that NVIDIA has been offering throughout this lineup. A not very impressive performance uplift. Again, 15%-ish seems typical with what they've done so far with, with a lot of the rest of the lineup. And then followed by a price cut, a small amount, but a cut compared to the previous generation to kind of uh, make at least it a little bit more enticing. Now, the problem with all of this, first of all, besides just being rumors at this point, is that with the uncertain tariff situation in the United States, it's unclear how these uh, would translate uh, you know, as pre or post tariff, especially because the source for this uh, seems to be from board channels, which is more uh, focused on, I think, the Chinese RMB pricing, and then uh, adjusting that to the US without taking tariffs into account if tariffs end up indicating this, because again, there's been all sorts of movement on which countries are being tariffed and by how much and which products are being excluded and all of that. That's a little beyond the scope of this video, other than saying, uh, wait and see, I guess, <laughs> how this actually plays out. Anyway, uh, the other thing I'll mention is, okay, notice again the eight gigabyte and 16 gigabyte models. Let's think about how this compares to the uh, the previous cards. And, and here they actually do have the previous cards uh, stacked up here. Uh, again, all my sources will be linked in the video description. This is a videocards.com article. And their chart here shows this pretty well. The 4060 Ti had an eight gigabyte version originally at 399. 
Uh, so again, $20 knock to the MSRP, maybe a, a small performance uplift along with that, with that and the introduction of multi-frame gen. Uh, the problem is that an eight gigabyte card wasn't very attractive even in 2023, and now we're talking 2025. Um, so 379 feels like a lot for an eight gigabyte card in 2025, regardless of the performance uplift it gets. Honestly, the bigger performance uplift it gets, almost the more insulting the eight gigabytes of VRAM becomes, because that means it's capable of doing more if it's not choking on its VRAM capacity. I would say that there would maybe be the use case of people who literally only play esports games and uh, always turn the graphic settings down to low. So if you have no interest in running at high graphic settings, then maybe eight gigabytes is fine and that's your use case and maybe you'll wanna save the 50 bucks. I would say that that's still a very short-sighted decision and I wouldn't recommend it, but maybe that's the use case. Honestly, I would wish that there just not be an eight gigabyte version, but um, the 16 gigabyte version here is at least being rumored at 429, which is significantly different than what we saw with the 4060 Ti series, where initially there was no 16 gigabyte version. They eventually released one later um, uh, in July, and it was uh, after the original one launched in May of 2023, and it was a $100 price premium, which at the time Nvidia said it's just so expensive to do the clamshell memory and all of that. Well, apparently this time around, they feel like a $50 price gap is appropriate. And I do feel like for the vast majority of people, if you are going to buy a 5060 Ti, and we still don't know what their performance level is or if that makes sense, but if you're gonna choose between the two, it seems like spending that extra $50, if that does end up being the real world price difference, um, to get the 16 gigabytes of VRAM and not have to worry about all those VRAM issues does seem to make sense. And it's a lot easier to do that than we had here with this $100 gap. Um, where what ended up happening in the real world market is both of these dropped in price, but the 16 gigabyte model dropped a lot more. Uh, whereas with the, um, th th this uh, 5060 Ti series, it's almost like, well, now that they're only $50 apart, it'd be kind of nice if there was just a 16 gigabyte model and maybe that came in at the original 399 MSRP. I don't know, but anyway, uh, these are the current rumors. And again, the uh, rumored uh, announcement is April 15th and the rumored launch date is April 16th. Again, other than the VRAM capacity difference, there is not rumored to be any difference in the um, other specs of the uh, 5060 Ti 8 and 16 gigabyte models. We also have some rumored specs of the 5060, but they're rumoring the launch date for that to be in May, although to be announced at the same time as the 5060 Ti series card. So a later release date for the non-Ti model. Now, um, uh, the 5060 is also rumored to only be eight gigabytes. So depending on the pricing there, I mean, again, eSports card kind of thing, okay, but buying an eight gigabyte card in 2025, yes, you can adjust graphic settings for it to work, but it seems uh, not great. <laughs> anyway, that's where we're at here. You'll notice that there is a bit of a CUDA core bump compared to the 4060 Ti, but not a massive one although there is uh, an increase to GDDR7 memory compared to GDDR6, again, if all of the rumored specs end up uh, panning out. So there would be, it, it is reasonable to expect a performance increase. Uh, again, whether or not this leaked benchmark of 15%-ish ends up being accurate, we'll have to see. Uh, but I wouldn't expect like some kind of 50% performance jump given the specs that we're seeing here and given the uh, what we've seen happen with the rest of the 50 series when compared to the 40 series specs. There's not been a lot of an increase in performance per CUDA core. So a small increase in CUDA cores and some memory bandwidth. Um, there you go. Probably wouldn't expect a dramatic uplift. So this seems to be pretty consistent with what we've seen with the rest of the uh, 50 series so far. Now, um, that being said, we also have some listings of the 9060 uh, XT, although at this point there doesn't seem to be any uh, rumored release date for that. And it also seems to be being listed with both an eight gigabyte and a 16 gigabyte version. So they seem, AMD seems to be doing the same kind of thing there. But again, what is their pricing? What is the performance? We'll have to wait and see how all of that stacks up. And um, interestingly, with some of the gigabyte listings for the 5060 Ti, uh, there's a lot of listings for the 16 gigabyte models, but there, in this particular leak, doesn't seem to be any eight gigabyte models listed. Now, does that mean that there's not going to be eight gigabyte models? 
Uh, and, and these rumors were inaccurate? Well, I wouldn't go that far, but maybe that is indicating that, or at least maybe that they will lead with the 16 gigabyte models and maybe expect those to sell more. Uh, but again, just something interesting to note in this particular leak. Again, it'll be interesting, when, so when do we get the AMD information? Well, we don't know at this point, although AMD does have an advancing AI event announced for June 12th, but they have not said that there would be gaming GPU announcements here. Of course, that doesn't mean it won't happen, but those could be at a different event sooner or later. We'll have to see. AMD has said that the 9070 series has been an extremely successful launch for them, launching a, a, a large volume uh, much higher than any of their uh, previous launches. Now, part of that could have been that it seemed like the launch was somewhat delayed, so there was a long time to build up stock. And then if you sell out all of that stock on the first day and you just have more stock available than you do in previous launches, I mean, um, we'll have to see what happens. I wanna see more supply getting into the market. Now, in general, another thing that could help uh, with all of this pricing and performance uh, up, up, uplifts and things like that is, all of these uh, players, AMD, NVIDIA, all of it, they're all sourcing the actual production of the silicon from TSMC. So I'm always on my eye out for, is there gonna be more co competition with TSMC's advanced nodes? And I am seeing a headline here at WCCF Tech, again, all my sources will be linked in the video description, saying that Samsung has achieved massive progress with its two nanometer yield rates, and that Apple, AMD, and NVIDIA are all in line to adopt two nanometer from the Korean giant. However you read into the details of this, this is all far from actually absolutely certain. This is not just saying NVIDIA will be producing gaming GPUs on Samsung's two nanometer process, or, or at least anytime soon. But in general, it would be really nice if there was more competition with TSMC on the advanced nodes that are good for GPUs uh, to maybe give us more of those generational price to performance uplifts because if the cost of the silicon from TSMC keeps going up, as the nodes advance and there's not a lot of competition from it, then um, companies like AMD and NVIDIA aren't going to uh, want to eat into their own profit margins unless they have to. So um, that eats into what we as a consumer gets as our price to performance uplifts. But again, this is far from saying anything meaningful from this will actually for sure happen. Now, with that being said, I also want to bring up the fact that multiple uh, users, as well as big name YouTube outlets, are discussing the current crop of NVIDIA drivers. Uh, we had uh, Digital Foundry in one of their um, larger, you know, podcast DF Direct style, like two hour long sessions. One of their discussion topics, which is broken out in DF Clips, is discussing NVIDIA driver issues. Uh, that have been uh, coming up recently. And then shortly after that, um, Gamers Nexus also did an investigation of trying to re reproduce a lot of reported user driver issues on the 50 series. And honest, and it's really not just the 50 series, it's even just drivers that came along with the 50 series. And these are not necessarily even reporting on the same issues. Uh, in uh, what I saw here at the Digital Foundry coverage, a lot of the issues were focused on uh, things not applying consistently, like from the NVIDIA app when you try to apply settings, and then things like VSync being broken, which matters a lot for outlets like Digital Foundry who use VSync to capture footage, because again, when you're capturing footage, it's at a fixed refresh rate. Um, uh, and that not working properly, causing all sorts of problems. Uh, there was uh, others discussed here as well. Gamers Nexus's coverage seemed to focus on uh, running two monitors at the same time. There's a lot of other ones, but more about just all sorts of, uh, you know, crashing problems, green screen problems, all sorts of issues. Again, follow the sources. I will link them in the video description. But all of these were just uh, kind of investigating responses to also what is being reported widely on all sorts of forums and report threads and all of that. And NVIDIA has been releasing a bunch of hot fixes, but it does not seem to be totally solving the problem. And we've also had game developers telling people to roll back their drivers for stability benefits. So in general, this is kind of eating into NVIDIA's reputation as one of the reasons you spend more money for maybe the same performance on an NVIDIA product. One of the uh, reasons that's often given is you trust that the drivers will be stable. And AMD for a long time had a reputation of uh, driver stability issues. 
AMD has been slowly earning back some trust with their drivers, not that, that, that they're perfect either, and NVIDIA was never perfect either. But it certainly seems like if you graphed the trend line in uh, how much you trust the driver stability, uh, NVIDIA driver stability seems to be trending down, <laughs> whereas AMD driver stability seems to be trending up. It's way beyond anything I could definitively tell you uh, as far as which one is currently more stable because the amount of data points you need for that is just not something I'm able to statistically measure. But it is very much clear that NVIDIA is currently having a lot of driver stability problems in a wide variety of use cases and issues as being reported by trustworthy outlets as well as tons of just general user reports. And um, that's not a good thing. <laughs> anyway, we'll have to just kind of see how this follows up. Hopefully Nvidia gets things sorted out because I am very much not somebody who's rooting for Nvidia's downfall. I want them to offer good products. <laughs> I want AMD to offer good products. I want Intel to offer good products. I want good competition, everybody getting better and better and better and better and strong competition driving things down just like I want co competition on the process nodes, driving prices down for good processes. Um, anyway, so I don't like to see things uh, trending down here, but that seems to be what is happening and I am reporting on that. Uh, now, in a, a couple other uh, kind of quick notes, in a, a recent video, I did discuss the uh, Nintendo Switch 2 pricing and how tariffs were pausing the um, uh, pre-orders because maybe pricing would need to be adjusted. But again, as the tariff situation seems to be at least paused and possibly being reevaluated. Um, that does seem to uh, relieve some pressure on the Nintendo Switch 2 pricing. We'll have to see what comes of that. We'll have to see how that plays into the PC space. But again, there's a lot of questions on all of that right now, and I just don't think we have a lot of uh, answers, <laughs> at least that we can be confident in. We'll just have to see how things play out. And then also, uh, just a quick thing I saw while I was looking at Video Card's uh, website that I just thought was interesting, so I'll leave you with here, was a report of CompuLab introduces a fanless, small form factor desktop PC with an RTX 4060, up to 300 watts of passive cooling. And I just thought this was cool. Uh, it's always interesting to see these passive cooling designs where if somebody cares 100%, like, like the noise is the, the, the biggest concern, then seeing these passive cooling systems is really interesting. And seeing one get up to 300 watts of passive cooling and get an RTX 4060 in there for some reasonable performance, I think that that's just neat. So I thought I'd report on that. Anyway, all of my sources will be linked in the video description. And um, well, again, I'll follow up on all of the leaks and, and rumors and whatnot uh, with the 5060 Ti stuff and AMD's competition, all that. So stay tuned to the channel. Huge supporter, a uh, huge thank you to supporters, subscribers, commenters, viewers, people who click the join button to directly support the channel financially. Huge thank you to everybody. And I hope all of you have an excellent day.